Cuda.com and Royal Farms bringing you the game of the week. We are in Towson, Maryland, where the Calvert Hart Hall Cardinals and their number one national ranking going up against the visiting Conestoga Pioneers from Philadelphia. Conestoga ranked number three in the country. Let's talk about some of the talent that Coach Brian Sampson has been able to develop for the Pioneers on attack. Number 36, Tyler Brook. He's headed to University of Maryland along with number one, Bradley Lord. Connor Fresina, another guy who can score goals in bunches. Midfielders, number 18, Adam Goins. He's headed to Notre Dame. We always like that family connection. As well as number 34, Mike McGregor, who's going to go to Drexel. Defensively, Jamie Akita, a kid who played in that Under Armour All-American Underclassman event. He's headed to Duke. And then you have goalie Robbie Zanino, also an Under Armour All-American for the Underclassman games last year. He's headed to Michigan as a goaltender. He was also one of the driving forces behind Conestoga's upset of Boys Latin last year. Uh, let's talk about Calvert Hall. I'm Booker Corrigan alongside Brian Corrigan. Let's learn about the Calvert Hall Cardinals. Well, Brian Kelly's Cardinals are ranked number one this year, and with good reason. A lot of it comes from the offensive end, where you have Ryan and Carter Brown uh, working with the Kellys, uh, Patrick, Stephen, and Johnny. Not all of uh, uh, one ilk, but yes. certainly cousins, which we know a little bit about. Defensively, they have uh, Evan Connell and Garrett Eppel, who will be attending Notre Dame next year. And uh, the goalie is Jack Brust, who actually uh, at one point was coached by Booker Court. Yeah. We always like to throw those little tidbits out for you. Again, this is the CUDA.com Game of the Week presented by the great folks at Royal Farms. Get to Royal Farms before or after every game. They have everything you need. Royal Farms, real fresh, real fast. And we are set to go here, Conestoga. It's their first game of the year. Calvert Hall has already beaten a great St. Mark's team from Texas. Uh, Coach Hayward Lee and David Smith doing a great job with that St. Mark's program. As we see Stephen Kelly make quick work of that opening faceoff. One of those guys who can score in punches and right off the bat. Well, Stephen's not only a faceoff guy, but he's also a guy who can really pressure the goal. A full field athlete facing off for Conestoga, Jared Jacobs. They actually lost a faceoff guy in a scrimmage this year. Get our first look at Patrick Kelly driving to the cage. Aaron pass. We're going to get a push. That's a good call. Referee Carmen D. John Domenico right in position. Always making the call. It was more of a nudge than a push. It looked a little bit like you just got that extra energy in the beginning of the yeah. game and you got to burn it off somehow. Gave him a little half a nudge. This is CUDA.com and the Royal Farms Game of the Week. Booker Corrigan and Brian Corrigan bringing you the action from Calvert Hall. Calvert Hall in their home whites, Conestoga Road Maroons. Conestoga ranked number three nationally. Great squad. You can just tell that Coach Brian Sampson's developing that talent year in, year out. It looks like they're just kind of going into a little, you know, circle type situation where they're just going to move the ball around a little bit and give everybody a touch, looking for the right matchup. Jordan Clunder, number seven, along with Adam Goins up top. Goins, right handed shot. Hard bouncer, no good, backed up by Stoga. A great foot race, as you can see, May Tyler Mays for Calvert Hall, giving everything he had on that one. Nice job on the backup by Conestoga. There's nothing worse than taking a shot and not having a guy there to get the ball back for you. And we've talked a lot this year in broadcast of you see more and more of defensemen realizing that Mitty's gonna shoot and they just take off running for the end line and they win a lot of free possessions that way. We're gonna keep our eye on it today. And it's a, it's a very important thing because it's possessions. And the, the more possessions you have, well, you can't score if you don't have the ball. Let's put it that way. It's an amazingly astute observation Thank by Brian Corrigan. Yes, it is. As we see the Conestoga faithful piling in. Great crowd tonight, great atmosphere. If you couldn't make it, that's why CUDA.com does what we do. Here's Goins top center. Stoga doing a nice job of controlling the tempo. They're not slowing it down as much as they are just trying to set the pace. Yeah, and once again, they're kind of keeping it kind of open in the middle where guys can cut in and out a little bit and looking for the right matchup. This is McGregor driving hard left. He gets his shot off, saved by Bruss, picked up by Mays. Mays is a defenseman who's going to be everywhere on the field. Nice job by the goalie. 
not only making the save, but getting it up and out right away so that they turn defense into offense quickly. Johnny Bells, Brian Bolwicki, top center now. Patrick Kelly on the left side. And we're going to keep our eye on number 10, Jordan Germanhausen. Attackman behind the cage. Here's Bells, shot goal. Johnny Bells, he'll make you pay. He drives left hands. Very nice set. They went to a 1-4, and then they kind of swept out of the way. He had a good sweep to his left. High and hard one. Johnny Bells with an unassisted goal. 9-29, you see him sweeping across the field and just stinging it high on Zanino. I think the key for Conestoga will be if they can uh, get some action here in this faceoff. And when you say that, this is Stephen Kelly for Calvert Hall facing off at about an 80% clip against the best faceoff guys in the country. Uh, he actually made the under-19 USA team, did Stephen Kelly. He's two for two on faceoffs so far, and two for two on creating offense out of those faceoffs. Well, nice job by Conestoga to repel the first attack and make them settle down and play. It's always easier to have success against a team if you can get them settled down where your defense can also be settled. And Patrick Kelly going against a short stick, but Stoga making a nice stop there. Good position, ball bobbled out of bounds, but play on. And Stoga looks to clear. They got the far side of the field wide open. What a night for lacrosse. Huda.com and Royal Farms. First quarter of today's game brought to you by the Baltimore Crabs Lacrosse Club. Great organization helping out Cuda year in, year out. All the Baltimore Crabs want to do is support the efforts of these fine athletes and coaches. That's why they're involved with these great high school teams. Stoga takes it back once again and kind of spreads it out to give themselves a nice bit of time to settle and then go into their offense. They're, it really looks like they're looking for matchups. Seeing a lot of number seven, Jordan Clunder, right now. He's being deed up by Brian Bolwicki. Clunder gets it back up. Bradley Lord all the way inverted to the top. He's normally an attackman who dodges behind Tyler Mays. Strip Dilicious, real quick. Ball on the ground, no pushes yet. Garrett Eppel coming up with that one, the defenseman. And here's Kelton Black driving hard to the cage, pays a price to get the shot off. Yeah, Calvert Hall really likes to put pressure on the goal from an unsettled situation, which is a, is a great way to attack in lacrosse, since once defenses are set, they're very tough to score on. And we've seen this Conestoga defense match up very well tonight. Again, this is their first game, so there's a lot of little nuances, little hiccups that they still have to work out, but they're doing a great job so far, playing good position, settled defense. As long as they can keep the man to man and stay in front of their man, it'll limit their slides and that might help them, especially in an early game like this, because you need the second and third slides that are hard, that takes time to develop through the year. Great save, Zanino on the right, on the right side, shot by Brian Bolwicki. One of the things that I've noticed also by this Conestoga team is the, the spirit and the culture of the team. You see backup goaltender Brody Shea down there in a cast, but he's as emphatic as anybody as far as helping his team receive that enthusiasm and get into it. Brody Shea, one of those guys that Coach Sampson made sure to mention in, in our conference call last night. Conestoga has the ball down and is once again settling it, yep. taking their time and getting themselves in a situation where they can attack where they want to actually attack from and not, not in any hurry to go into something too fast. Subbing guys in and out. Again, we got Tyler Brook. He's wearing 38 tonight. There was a jersey mishap, which is code for I forgot my jersey coach. Here's Goins, right side guarded by Bullwicky. Goins gets it over to Tyler Brook. And now it's Bradley Lord behind the cage. Lord to a cutting. Adam Goins can't Very find nice the cage. spacing by Conestoga on that. There's plenty of room for the guy to make his cut, and the other guys were out far enough that the Calvert Hall players gave enough room that there was a good passing lane there without sticks in it. A great notice of that passing lane availability. 
Bradley Lord again behind the cage, taking some lumber by Garrett Eppel. Excuse me, Evan Connell. Lord inside roll, shot goal, one to one. Conestoga off the bus. 5.40 to go, first quarter, they tied it up 1-1. I think that time Conestoga used uh, Calvert Hall's aggression against themselves where their defensive player got very aggressive and actually took a step too high and then slipped a little bit, and the guy did a very nice job of rolling back, staying in front of the goal and finishing. You can see on that replay, Bradley Lord coming up high, turning around, rolling back, and then shooting a hard low bouncer. Stephen Kelly wow. practicing his craft. It's going to be very hard for Conestoga to make any runs in this game with <laughs> Stephen Kelly at the face off circle. Yeah. He is one of those guys you just sometimes marvel at. And he's a left-handed kid, so he has to face off right-handed. So that's another thing that always kind of takes me back a little bit. Carter Brown driving right-handed, fakes the flip. And this is Jordan Germanhausen, number 10. The Quick little attackman, Stephen Kelly, shot goal. Kelly goes hip high on the shot, nice lefty. I think he kind of surprised the goalie actually on that one because um, he looked like he was in position, but I, I just don't look like he was prepared for Stephen to take that shot. It was very well done and very tricky. And you, you could see Zanino, his feet moving on that. His shot's coming in, it puts him in a tough spot. Uh, make Royal Farms your first stop before and after every game for everything from custom-built subs and wraps, healthy snacks, drinks, fresh brewed coffee, western fries, and of course, Royal Farms' delicious, world-famous, fresh, never-frozen chicken. Royal Farms, real fresh, real fast. Much better job by the Conestoga guy tying Kelly up so that his guys can get in and try to help out and get the ball. Johnny Kelly coming up with a tough ground ball for Stoke, for Calvert Hall, excuse me. If you can't win a faceoff, the best thing you can do is try to tie the guy up and let your wings come in and help out in the play. Long stickman Miles Thomas, soon to be Drexel Dragon. Coach Brian Volker doing a great job bringing in local talent as well as national talent, those Drexel Dragons. Tyler Brook, top center, guarded by Johnny Kelly. Brook, one of those guys, about 6'2", 180, all athlete. I believe Brook was actually uh, listed as an attackman, so it looks like they're trying to just run him in offensively and create some situations like this one where he gets a shot goal sky whammy thrown by Connor Fresina. Fresina fakes the pass up top. Take a look at the replay. You see a little sky whammy towards the top. And then the worm burner, hard and low to the far side. Once again, you can, sometimes you can just surprise the goalie when you shoot in a situation where he's not expecting it. The second goal for both teams made a little bit of a shot that catches the goalies off guard. And again, both these goalies, Brust and Zanino, two of the top goalies in the country. And we have two of the top teams in the country, Booker Corrigan and Brian Corrigan bringing you the CUDA.com Game of the Week presented by the great people at Royal Farms. There's a Royal Farms near you somewhere. Get there. Kelly is so dominant on the faceoff that Conestoga has basically <laughs> taken both wing guys and moved them all the way down to the end of the line so that they can just be on defense, ready to play. That time it was Jordan Clunder taking the faceoff. Defensively, Tim Langerhans doing a nice job, as well as 24 Carson Scott. Patrick Kelly driving left-handed, freezes hand shot. Zanino was on that one. Looking forward to getting a glimpse of attackman Jake Scott, who is now subbed into the game. One of those guys who can play all over the field, but attack is his specialty. Calvert Hall does a good job of moving so that the Conestoga constantly has to change its backup. So it really creates some nice situations where if you beat the first guy, you might have a second or two to get your hands free and have time to get your shot off. Kelton Black driving hard shot. Tough angle. You can see that Conestoga defense had to collapse so deep. Kelton Black came out of it with no angle to shoot. Yeah, that was one where you might have just wanted to move the ball behind and he maybe catch something backside. 
And there's that backside. Shot goal. Huge stinger. Johnny Bell's second goal of the night. It looks like Conestoga got caught a little ball watching on that one. And uh, it just managed. Uh, the guy on the backside ended up being by himself because his defender was staring at the guy with the ball. And Brian, you're exactly right in the sense of that, that weak side is what's going to be open a lot in these games, especially with Conestoga. You know, it's their first game, so the defensive slides, the second slide's not always right where you want it. Stephen Kelly, I, I think he just won a, I'm not sure if he picked that one up or not. I, I do believe he won a face off. Oh, Patrick Kelly, and that's the run that Conestoga has to look out for. Yeah, it's very hard when you have a guy who gets the face off every time and pressures you offensively off of it. Johnny Bell stinging it. This first quarter brought to you by the great people in the Baltimore Crabs lacrosse organization as well as Royal Farms, real fresh, real fast. We also have to take a moment to take a positive step. Sexually transmitted infections such as chlamydia and gonorrhea have serious health consequences, but these infections are easy to treat. So if you think you might be infected, talk to your healthcare provider or get tested free at your local public health clinic. It's fast, it's easy. You don't even need a blood sample. If you test negative, great, but if not, it's a step toward getting the treatment you need BD Diagnostics, helping all people live healthy lives. BD.com. Power Hall, Stephen Kelly. We got Mario Della Cutie caught for the face-off violation for Conestoga right there. Unfortunate turn of events for Stoga, but they, again, get guys back in the hole. They recognize the talents of Stephen Kelly. Not hard to. It's really hard to uh, stop a, a, a talented offensive team when they, they're playing make it, take it at the midfield <laughs> line. Here's Stephen Kelly squaring up against Miles Thomas. Defensively, Zach Paro also doing a nice job. Johnny Kelly on the invert pass, knocked down in traffic. Carson Scott headed to Delaware, showing he knows where the passing lanes are. A great job Power of swarming ball. by Conestoga, though. They really got on that ground and ball. Referee Carmen D. John Domenico correcting his own error right there. We'd love to see that. It's so great to see a referee step in and say, hey, whoa, 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 I misspoke. Clearly a red push. Jordan Germanhausen, top left side. Talbot Hall rotates in and out of formation. So they start like a 2-3-1 and they rotate into their 1-4-1. And the most of it, I think, <laughs> Unfortunately, that time they had a moving pick, but most of the time they're just trying to create the space so that their guys can get a good solid sweep and not have the slide come immediately. Great play, but called off by the pick. He's a stinger of a shot. Great shot. Good moving pick, too. Yeah. There's Jamie Akita, number three, headed to Duke. Great athlete, great defenseman. Still go back on offense. They haven't been on offense for a while. We got a minute and a half left in the first quarter. The hard part when you haven't been in offense is if you feel like you really want to make something happen, but you've got to stay patient because then you could just turn the ball right back to the other team if you're not patient. Goins comes up with a great catch shot goal. Adam Goins. Adam Goins logs on to www.istingcorners.com. <laughs> Great play there by Stoga. A really good job of the player creating space for himself by moving around a couple guys who were right in the middle. And it looked like he was stepping off angle a little bit, but he created the space he needed to get a shot off. Goins doing a nice job. 111 left in the first quarter. Four to three now, Coward Hall. Great ground ball on the wing play by Kelton Black. And now we get a flag flying. Referee Maceo Parker. 
stepping in, making that call. And Stoga is going to be man down. It's one of those first game situations where you work that out, they're going to be okay. That's not a big deal. Absolutely. It's one of those situations in the box where it's an illegal substitution. And that's that's certainly early season type stuff that just gets worked out, hopefully by the next quarter. Yeah. I know Coach Sampson is pulling for it to be the next quarter. Coward Hall, circle offense, little roll off action. Now they're in a 1 4. Underneath, Jordan Germanhausen. Nifty little play on the inside. And ladies and gentlemen, I have just won the race to Nifty. 44 seconds left in the first quarter. It sounds a little late to me. I thought it was going to be within the first couple minutes. I was giving him opportunity. I got to tell you, I was waiting on you, brother. Waiting on you. I wanted you to have it. Ty Zanders won the race last week. Uh, Calvert Hall did a great job on that man up of pulling Conestoga's defense up in front of the goal so that the guy could circle around, come from behind, and basically he was just below everybody on Conestoga. So when he caught the ball, it was a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. Jordan Germanhausen. We're going to get a hold here against Kelly, and that's going to go down. I don't know if that's a face-off loss, but... Conestoga will take it. Yeah. 5-3 now, Calvert Hall leads. 30 seconds left, first quarter action. Booker Corgan, Brian Corgan bringing you the CUDA.com Game of the Week presented by Royal Farms. Real fresh, real fast. I think Conestoga will try to just work something so that they can get the last shot of this quarter and not give, leave any more opportunity for Calvert Hall at this point. Their defense can use the amplified break. Bradley Lord driving hard left-handed. Pass, Aaron, Adam Goins comes up with it. And that is going to be it for the first quarter. First quarter brought to you by the Baltimore Crabs Lacrosse Club, a great organization. And let's also remind you to make Royal Farms your first stop before and after every game for everything from custom-built subs and wraps, healthy snacks, drinks, fresh fruit, coffee, Western fries, and, of course, Royal Farms' delicious, world-famous, fresh, never-frozen chicken. Royal Farms, real fresh, real fast.